Hi friends, welcome to this video tutorial. Our focus will be planting and its methods. It is in continuation to the series of videos on nursery and gardening. It will cover in detail various methods of planting practiced in nursery or in open field. So first of all, let's understand what we mean by planting. Planting, as you know, is placing seeds or propagules firmly in the soil to grow. So, it's a simple term that you plant something in the soil firmly to grow or it can be an act of setting a plant in the ground for growth. That's why you plant in the nursery or in field. It's done at an appropriate season. The aim is basically to collect the final harvest. We have accordingly annuals, biennials and perennials depending upon their stay in the field and their life cycle. So planting means placing seeds or propagules. Propagules include those parts by which a plant propagates. It can be even rhizome, it can be even stem cutting or any other means of propagation. What are the methods of planting? Methods of plant Procratized in nursery include direct seeding, transplanting, direct planting, indirect planting, manual versus mechanized planting. But in this video, we will be discussing only the direct seeding and different methods of direct seeding being practiced. First of all, Methods of seed sowing. The first is that is direct sowing or direct seeding. It's a forming system in which seeds are directly sown at the beginning of the planting season in the field or a crop area, seed bed or in nursery bed. And the aim is to get the final harvest. So it means seed to harvest. You are putting the seed to harvest. It's practiced for crops which germinate in short duration. So as I said, it simply means planting. Is a planting from seed. It means seed to harvest. So you have to prepare a soil for seed sowing you have to plow it you have to make small large aggregates small aggregates putting manure to it and ultimately making different furrows or ridges and then ultimately after preparing the soil you, you can put the seeds in these lines or furrows directly one by one or that can be in a continuous flow again by mean by manual means so as a word direct seeding means you are putting seed directly in soil literally it may not be interpreted as direct though we are putting the seed directly in the soil but basically there is a pretreatment seeds are subjected to pretreatment they are being soaked in water. They are incubated because you know seed has a dormancy and there can be an uh, inhibition in germination. So to overcome the dormancy, to initiate germination, seeds are pretreated or soaked and then they are planted. So in literal sense, that means before direct seeding, the seeds are pretreated. Even they are treated with fungicides like Kapton, 
carbendism uh, at the rate of 2.5 to 3 grams per kg of the seed to keep them free from pathogens. So these are the examples where you are pre-treating the seeds with these things before going for the direct seeding. Corn is there, sorghum is, millets, pulse, beet, carrots, melon, spinach, radish, lady fingers, nasturtium, and bitter gourd. These are the examples which are taken, which are being propagated by direct seeding, and the seeds are subjected to pre-treatments. What are the advantages of direct seeding? It gives more freedom of choice to the farmer or a grower. A diverse plant species can be sown at the same time. Survival rate is better. As cotyledons are more resistant to frost than baby plant. It proves cost effective on lower scale. Seeds cost less than seedling. So it has some advantages. But also there are certain disadvantages. But the advantages also include area can be revegetated quickly and cheaply. Because you are, you are putting seeds directly in the field or directly in the nursery bed. So area can be revegetated quickly and cheaply. Handling of seeds is easier than seedling. Storage and transportation of seeds is easier and cheaper. It is in comparison to the seedling. Seeding operations requires less labor. It is independent of nursery requirement. Because you are taking them directly in the field, putting them in the field, so there is no nursery requirement because you are putting the seeds directly, direct sowing. But there are certain disadvantages of direct seeding. It is less reliable on some sites and across seasons because there can be failures also that will result in the failure of a crop. Always have chances of 10 to 20 percent failure in germination. It amounts to excessive use of germplasm. Survival rate of viable seeds often remains low dependent on special treatment of seeds before sowing. Promotes crop density in the crop area. So when you are putting seeds in the field, there are every chances that there can be more density at particular places, at some places, and there will be, un because due to uneven sowing of seeds, and then you will have to go for manual crop thinning to ensure evenly spaced crop because you are scattering the seeds. As a result, there can be uh, this, there will be an uneven sowing and that can have a crop, more density of a crop in patches and you will have to ensure that it's to be manually unthickened so that the crop is placed evenly. What are the various methods of direct seeding? Direct seeding may be done by broadcasting, drilling, sowing behind the plow, dibbling, hill dropping, sowing in plug trays, planting, transplanting, check row planting. So we'll be discussing these methods one by one. Broadcasting or scatter planting is the simplest method of seed sowing. It's the most common and the oldest method of seed sowing. You are broadcasting the seeds. It's easy, quick, cheap method of seeding. Seeds can be randomly scattered or separate on the soil surface, either manually or mechanically. Before sowing, Soil must be properly dug, made into small aggregates, thoroughly mixed, uniformly leveled, and slightly raised to avoid water stagnation. As I said, before seeding, you have to prepare the soil for that. So broadcasting 
is the simplest method. It can be done by manual means as well as mechanical means. Manually it is done by hand broadcasting. A volume of seed is held by one hand and thrown with wide swath. Scattered seeds are covered by planking or other devices. When you are scattering the seeds on the soil, then with the help of a, a plank or other devices, you are covering it with the soil. You are leveling it with the soil. In manual broadcasting, uniformity of seeds depends upon a skill of a broadcaster or a nurseryman. A nurseryman who is trained in scattering, there can be less uneven uh, distribution and it usually utilizes more seeds. In manual hand broadcasting more germplasm is used. This is how you are scattering with uh, the hand and giving a direction to the seeds in the soil which is already prepared. It can be done by this method also. This is a manual broadcasting or you are putting your hand and you are or you are scattering on the soil this way. These are the manual broadcasting methods. Mechanical broadcasters, there are mechanical spreaders also, seed spreaders. Machines are used to scatter the seeds on the soil surface, used for large scale operations. Machines scatter the seeds on the soil surface at control rate because it has a proper seed metering mechanism. So mechanical broadcasters are also available there. The seeds are covered gently with soil using wooden planks, boards, levelers attached to a tractor. And then beds can also be covered with seawood farm yard manure, which can be a mulching to, to go for the mulching. Mulching facilitates good seed germination. Yes, you are covering the seeds with a farmyard manner, manner and that is resulting in the mulching which facilitates good seed germination. It is common in crops with small seeds. It is capable of germination and sustained growth without soil cover. Examples are millets, mug bean, cowpea and forage crops. So mechanical broadcasters which are available here are these tractor built mechanical broadcasters. Seeds are put here and then it's being spread at a regular rate. This is the mechanical broadcaster and then after you are broadcasting you are putting a leveler and you are leveling the soil that's also that can be also attached with a tractor. So this is mechanical broadcasting. What are the advantages of advantages of broadcasting is broadcasting is the easy, quick and cheap method. Sickle labor is not required. No implements are required except in case of mechanized one done under moist conditions also. You are also doing for the rice making the right seed, rice seedlings that is kept in water that is also done with mechanical with manual broadcasting what are the disadvantages of broadcasting a wasteful process with uneven distribution of seeds there can, there can be a low productivity there can be improper placement of seeds and less soil cover and compaction has no plant to plant spacing arrangement because you are putting them randomly in the soil. There is no plant to plant spacing arrangement. There can be less germination due to poor seed and soil contact. Because when you are broadcasting, it's not necessarily that all the seeds will be in contact with the soil. So there can be no uniformity of germination. Less seedling vigor and establishment. Because some seedlings will be having good vigor because they are in contact with the soil. Others will be superficially attached and there will be more competition between the species seedlings so it will have a less seedling vigor. Spacing is not maintained within rows and lines. So it is 
uh, it is basically a random method and there is no possibility of interculture that is difficult because density of the crop is high within the plants there can be no other intercropping high quantity of seeds are required because it's also a wasteful process and it requires more of the seeds recommended only for closely spaced and small seeded crops so this method is actually recommended for closely spaced and small seeded crops the second method is called as the drilling or it is called as line sowing it is also a seed sowing but it is done in lines is an appropriate method of sowing seeds in the nursery involves dropping of seeds in furrow lines at definite depth in continuous flow and covering them with soil so shallow trenches are made with the help of stick depth of the trenches are generally 3 to 4 times of seed diameter this is a golden rule that is how much you have to cover the seed that should be 3 to 4 times of the seed diameter smaller the seed it will remain on the the surface uh more seed dia it has to go down more in the de the depth of the seed will be more manual drilling of small seeds can be done with hand even you are making a small drill seed can be released in a cascade or at a regular interval in rows you can take a simple bottle and can have a hole on it slid and bottle is filled with the seed and then you can put those seeds through the hole in a furrow it will come in the form of a cascade or it can be regulated at a regular intervals in a row that is you can put the seeds this way or the seeds can be put in a continuous cascade even with a hand in these rows this is called as the drilling or line sowing there are also mechanized drilling available done on a large scale and there are sowing implements like seed drill or seed come fertilizer drill even you can add with the seeds manures fertilizers pesticides while you are seeding them it requires more time energy and cost because machines are involved energy will be used there and maintains but maintains uniform population per unit area it can be also done by sowing behind the plow which is a traditional method or you can take the bullock drawn seed drills or tractor drawn drills these are also the mechanized drills which are available we'll see them one by one this is a zero to a seed drill seeds are kept here they are coming down it's being attached with the tractor and it's making the rows for rows and then the seeds the, the 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 seeds are being dropped they fall on these rows and then there are discs which are covering the soil that is tractor drawn seed drills it can make four rows five rows depends upon the the length of this arm so these are called as the mechanized uh, drilling which is done here another method is called as a seed dropping behind the plow seeds are placed in the plow furrow seeds are dropped continuously or at required spacing seed dropping is done by man working behind the plow it is also known as the kera method it has it was it's a traditional method depth of sowing is adjusted by adjusting the depth of the plow when the plow is shifted to next adjacent furrow seeds in the previous furrow are closed by the soil used for seeds like maize gram peas wheat and barley so this is basically the uh, bullock drawn you 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 have a bullock which is dry uh, which is which is uh, driving them and then here is present the funnel with the funnel is a pipe 
and then that comes down this is the traditional method of sowing one person manages this and the flow is deep in the soil uh, and then the seeds are put through this funnel and when it makes one turn one row seeds are being put there but when the successive row is being made the soil of this row covers the earlier row and also if you are getting it by means of a tractor you are plowing with the tractor when you are making the one row the next person is immediately broadcasting the seeds in this furrow and when it turns back in the next that soil covers this but this method traditional method has been modified it's drawn by the bullocks but they have added this uh, attachments here where you have the mechanized uh, drillers and they are making the furrows and the seeds are being dropped this there can be two furrow lanes there can be three row uh, uh, three row seed come fertilizer drills the seeds are being kept here and it's drawn it's drawn by the uh, bullock and then the seeds are being dropped or it can be four row planters this way so these are basically you are putting the seed either this way or this way by making a furrow and putting seeds in that furrow sowing behind the plow is done through this this the traditional method is called as the melabansa melabansa consists of a bamboo tube the it was a traditional method as a bamboo tube which i have shown in in the earlier slide provided with funnel shaped mouth one person drops the seeds through the funnel other man handles the plow and the bullocks this method is commonly used in villages it is known as pura method it is a slow and laborious method advantages of seed drilling it requires less quantity of seeds than the broadcasting one seeds are placed at proper and uniform depth row to row spacing is constant sowing is done at proper moisture level seed during drilling can be supplemented with fertilizers and manures that is when you are putting the seed you can add fertilizers or manures to the seed along with the sowing and since you are maintaining the row to row distance row to row spacing is constant interculturing is possible along the rows what are the disadvantages of seed drilling absolute requirement for seed sowing implements whether traditional or the modified tractor based are required persistently require wepsa condition wepsa emphasizes the balance of air and water around the roots to provide an aerobic environment ideal for beneficial microbes and this method is completely dependent on cichlid persons and is a time consuming process and there the cost inputs are very high because you are using the machines and that's fuel run machines the next method is called as dibbling dibbling refers to placing of seeds in the holes or pits made in the seed bed at predetermined space and depth with dibbler or a planter or with hand and covering seeds with the soil so here the difference is you are making holes or pits with a dibbler you are maintaining a space and a depth it is actually a line sowing it's practiced on plain surface ridges furrows bed channels and it is done under suitable soil conditions prior to sowing manures are also applied in the holes this is a dibbler 
Dibbler is a simple conical sewing equipment. It's used to make proper holes in the field. Dibblers with multiple conical projections are also available. Seeds are placed in holes made by frontal end of the dibbler at definite depth and at a fixed spacing. So you see, this is dibbling for sowing seeds. Two dibblers is making holes with this pointed head. This is also a dibbler. This is also a type of a dibbler. These are different types of the dibbler. And dibbler is having sometimes having four attachments. That means four holes can be made by one frame. And the dibbling is done at a proper spacing is there, lining is there, and then you can put the seeds in those in those holes. Or it can be done with this. So this is a dibbler. A dibbler is put here and then taken in this direction. So there is a space, a hole is created. Second is you are putting a plant there and then you are covering back this so that it gets covered back. So with a dibbler you are putting a seed and then you are taking it in a back direction so that it covers the soil. Or else it can be done, you are taking a dibbler, putting it in the soil and doing it in two directions so that a hole is made and then you are putting a seed or a plant and then with the help of your shoe you are covering the area so dibbling is also in rows or in the lines but you are making the holes after this this is also a dibbling method you can use a, a polythene and you are making with the help of your finger on a soil certain holes and in these holes you are putting these seeds this is also called as a dibbling. So dibbling is putting the seeds in the holes. You can put the seeds this way also. There are also certain rotary dibblers. They are also making the holes, but they are dibblers which is manually operated, which is a push type device. It has a rotating dibbling head with penetrating jaws, covering cum transport wheel, seed hooper, wooden roller and a handle. It is used for dibbling medium sized uh, seeds like maize and soya bean. So we have rotary dibblers. So seeds are being kept here. The front one is making the hole and then the seed is coming into that hole and it's being covered by the wheel which is around it. So it is also one row rotary dibbler which are also manually operated but they are making the hole and then seeds are kept here or the seeds are kept here one seed is coming down going into one hole and the jaw is there the jaw is making the depth the jaw is making the holes at an appropriate depth dibbling is done for wider spaced crops as broadcasting is done for closely spaced crops. It is done for wider spaced crops, which are medium to large sized seeds. Example, maize. Maize should have a distance between the two uh, plants. Sunflower, cotton, sorghum. After sowing, the trenches are covered with the fine soil. And light irrigation is recommended after sowing. And seed beds should be covered by polythene sheets, paddy straw, etc that acts as a mulching so covering help in quick and uniform germination of seeds and then mulches should be removed immediately after germination so this is one more method of seed uh, sowing that is dibbling what are the advantages of dibbling advantage of dibbling it requires less seeds gives rapid and uniform germination with good seedling vigor because you are putting a seed in a pit where you have put already fertilizers, you have kept a spacing there. It improves germination and quality of seedling, makes uniform population. Spacing between rows and plants is constant. Each seed gets independent space. Optimum plant population can be maintained. And there is a possibility 
you can go for the intercrop because there is a wider spaced crop. Uniform utilization of resources because when you are giving a space, so there is a utilization of the resources by each plant. These are the advantages of dibbling. But there are some disadvantages of dibbling also. It is laborious and labor intensive because you have to make the holes a time consuming and expensive process. When it's labor intensive, that means more, more expensive it will be. Not recommended for small seeds. And use it for bold and high value seeds. Require strict supervision. It can not be done by an unsickled person. Another method is called as the hill dropping. In this method, seeds are dropped at a fixed furrows. Furrows are dug with fixed spacing. Spacing between plant to plant in a row is constant. Hill dropping differs from drillers. In drilling, seeds are dropped in continuous stream. And no spacing is maintained between plant to plant in a row. Here, in hill dropping you maintain a space between plant and plant in a row sowing in plug trays or you call them as pro trays you have high value hybrid seeds which are usually sown in plug trays or pro trays pro trays are made up of soft plastic having shallow plugs plug trays are of different sizes with varied number of cells Cell varies from cells varies from 70 to 800 cells per tray of this much of dimension. Cells of the the size of the cell is important because there can be uh, a cell which is lower cell seedling producing lower cells are taller than grown in small cells. Used in both vegetables and flowering growing nurseries, often high quality. Paper egg crates are also used as pro trays. So you have number of these pro trays available depends upon the number of the cells it has. And these are deep, deep. Uh, these are also called the root trainers. You are filling them with the with the medium, whatever the the nature of the medium will be. You are putting then seeds into it and uh, here are putting these in each every cell you are putting the seed manually and you are covering them or you are putting making a small hole and putting seeds into it or there can be an automatic uh, root uh, trainers you are taking this tray which has number of cells and you are taking this tray it's it, it's through rotor it comes to this point where seeds are being kept and they make a small hole in each cell and then drops a seed into it so this is for the loris scale operations so you have the trays or often you can take the egg crates where you have these cells and you can directly put certain seeds into it so that seedlings are being formed now the last we will see what are the precautions taken during seed sowing as we have seen the different methods of seed sowing what are the precautions Seed must be healthy and infection free. Assure it. Small seeds are mixed with sand for equal distribution. Seeds must be sown at an appropriate depth. Thumb rule is generally three to four times of a seed diameter. Then you understand, depends upon the diameter, you put the seed in the soil. Seed is sown at adequate spacing to avoid overcrowding. Ensure that seed, seedlings get sufficient nutrients, aeration, water, and sunlight. Avoid too dry soils to prevent drying. Avoid too wet soils to prevent rotting of the seeds or the seedlings. So we have seen the different precautions which you have to take during seed sowing. In this video, in this video, we have seen different methods of planting. Hope this video has helped you to understand planting methods which are being practiced in nursery. 
and the other part of it that is transplanting and direct planting will be dealt in a separate video till that is uploaded goodbye stay safe and happy and thank you for watching this video